subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. A group of primatologists have published unusually disturbing results about the first ever sighting of an albino chimpanzee in the wild in Uganda and its subsequent murder at the hands of the chimp community elders. Albinism is very rare in animals, it is the complete absence of pigment and even in humans it is quite rare. In the wild it has hardly been ever observed in non-human primates. It comes with various problems and threats such as the inability to camouflage oneself. But the researchers have documented for the first time how when an albino baby is born in a chimp community, the other members of the community, especially the adult males, reacted towards it. They killed the baby within 20 days of birth. The researchers subsequently observed individuals in the community reacting to the baby chimp's body and then also performed a post-mortem for further analysis. Their findings in these set of observations give us more clues into chimp behavior which is much much more complex than we think. In this video, we'll briefly discuss this disturbing behavior that the chimps exhibited and why they did so and then also discuss albinism in animals as well as the extremely interesting and unique things we know about chimpanzees and chimp community and behavior all thanks to one person's 60 year long research. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Chimpanzees fall under the genus Pan along with bonobos. Their scientific name is Pan troglodytes and we know four to five subspecies of chimpanzees that exist in the wild. Chimpanzees are very similar to humans, surprisingly similar in fact for people who are not very familiar with primate behavior. Everything that we've known about chimpanzees we've learned since just the 60s when Jane Goodall, the world's foremost authority on chimps, started performing long-term field studies. Chimps are biologically similar to humans. They gestate for eight months instead of nine and the young are dependent on the mother for a long, long time going up to nine years of age. When they observe death, they mourn. And when they observe traumatic death, they can vocalize and act with frenzy. On a daily basis, chimps tend to engage in teamwork and can collaborate. They also communicate well. They can recognize themselves in the mirror. They can also understand sign language when taught. In the 1960s, a famous chimp called Washo learned over 350 signs and even taught them to her adopted son, Lulis. But further studies on the chimp Nim Chimpsky showed that chimps probably don't use sign language as language the way we use language. They basically just imitate us to communicate with us. Chimps also get tickled and they laugh when they're tickled and they can derive pleasure from being tickled up to an old age. Health-wise, chimps are susceptible to a lot of human diseases and viruses including polio. The HIV virus actually evolved from chimps and jumped to humans. Chimps also have behaviors that are similar to humans. Chimp groups have localized traditions and cultures in their grooming habits. Chimps are also thought to engage in prostitution for meat. And chimps are known to engage in actual war, not over mates but over territory. The Gombe Chimpanzee War lasted four years from 1974 to 78 in the Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania. Jane Goodall was working with them and she was the one to first notice that the chimps in the Kasakela community were fighting and the group was breaking up. Over a period of a year or so, the community split themselves into two different communities. The Kasakela community with about 20 adults and their young and the Kahama community with about 10 adults and their young. During this four-year war, all the males and some females in the newly formed Kahama community were killed except one which ran away. Then the Kasakela community expanded their territory further until they encountered an even bigger community after which they surrendered their new territory. So how did this war occur? Very much with bloodshed and murder. 
Individuals from the Kasakela community would gang up and ambush individuals from the Kahama community when they would be feeding on trees and they would just brutally murder them. After killing each individual, the chimps would do victory dances and vocalizations. They would do hooting and screaming and shouting and basically acting like drunk victorious soldiers. They also engaged in cannibalism at times. This war was the first documented evidence of this kind of conflict, violent conflict in a primate community that too in a chimp community which until then people were thinking were very peaceful and nice animals. In the 1970s, Jane Goodall was just telling the world brand new things about chimpanzees and this even came as a complete and utter shock to her. In fact, a lot of people and members of the scientific community refused to even believe such behavior could be seen in the wild among non-human primates. A lot of researchers said that she was likely anthropomorphizing or giving human traits and definitions and characteristics to animal behavior. But now, this is well understood and accepted and observed. Primates do go to war just like humans, we too are primates and primates have a dark side as Jane Goodall called it. The Gombe long-term study is still ongoing and has been for the past 60 years and we still get new data from this study. Chimps have also flown to space. Ham the Astrochimp was a part of the Mercury program and was launched into space in the 60s by the Americans. He performed a suborbital flight so he didn't enter Earth orbit. But before going to space, he was actually trained to perform some emergency tasks in space. So for example, he was trained to push a lever within 5 seconds of a blue light blinking, which he actually did so when he flew to space. He flew safely unlike Laika the dog and he was able to do these tasks and he flew for about 16 minutes before the first American human, Alan Shepard, flew 4 months later. Ham even had a female backup called Minnie who was also trained but she never flew. Another chimpanzee called Enos was also sent by NASA to space and Enos became the third primate to reach orbit after Yuri Gagarin and German Titov flew the same year and Enos is the first and only chimpanzee to have reached Earth orbit. So chimpanzees behave similar to humans, can do some tasks that humans do and also are biologically similar to humans. Among humans, it is thought that every 1 in 20,000 people or so can get affected by albinism. But albinism has never been observed for long periods of time in the wild, especially in chimp communities before. It has been seen only once in another chimp called Pinky. Pinky was captured immediately from the wild and grew up in captivity, so we don't know how the other members of the community would have reacted to Pinky in the wild. And we also don't even know if Pinky was able to integrate with other captive chimp communities. So knowing all this that primatologists know, what did they discover when they observed this albino infant chimp? The chimp that died belonged to the Sonso community which actually has a documented history of infanticide. The chimp's mother was 19 years of age. She had a previous child in 2017 which was immediately killed within two days by adult males. That was not albinistic. The second chimp baby was born in 2019. These observations are from 2019 and it was described as being fully white in color when the researchers first spotted the baby in the white. After they observed the chimp infant, the researchers started noticing that adults in the community were making noises that were alarm calls and sounds that are usually associated with warnings of danger, such as when they spot snakes or humans that they haven't seen before. On the day of the infanticide, the researchers noticed that there was physical contact and a lot of aggression between various chimps and the mother and the child. The most dominant male in the community ripped the child away from the mother. The mother was chased away and the males and some adult females then started to bite and kill the baby. When the infant died, the males dropped the carcass onto the tree branch. Other chimps then came to examine the body. They looked from a distance, then they sniffed and touched and moved the body, moved its hand, bit parts of the body 
touched its hair and so on. A total of 10 chimps that were present there among the 16 came in physical contact with the body before one of the chimps dropped it to the ground. The researchers then retrieved the body and performed an autopsy on it. The post-mortem analysis showed that the infant was not suffering from any other health consequence or disorders. So the adults in the community were not reacting to anything unusual other than the color of the infant. The cause of death was also established to be a bite to the head by an adult. Now what the researchers noticed in the span of these few days was that the way the group behaved towards the infant was very different from how chimpanzees typically receive mothers and newborns. Chimps react with aggression or excitement towards a new baby but never fear. This was the first time that most adults reacted with prolonged fear towards a newborn chimp. They kept producing calls that are described as alarm whos and wa barks which chimps use towards predators or danger which the researchers note is very similar to what is observed in birds when an albinistic bird is born. Newborn chimps are often murdered but the magnitude of reaction this time told the researchers that this was not a normal reaction. Adults seemed to always be wary and vigilant whenever the mother and the infant were present. The researchers note that the way the body was mutilated was not very different from how chimps murder other chimps. However, how the chimps reacted to the body was quite unique. The adults touched and inspected the body for a prolonged period of time. Usually this level of detailed inspection is not observed and only close relatives come in contact with a dead infant, sometimes displaying affection like grooming the body. This reaction showed that many individuals were in fact stroking the hairs on the body or pinching the skin or biting it, showing that they were all curious and were examining the dead body to understand it. But it's not that they didn't think it was a chimpanzee. They clearly knew it was a chimpanzee because some adults were also engaged in acts of grooming. The researchers think that they probably thought it was a different kind of chimpanzee, likely from a different territory that they did not understand. Chimps also use scent a lot to communicate, especially scent that is secreted by the anal glands. So many adults were also observed inspecting the baby's genitals in great detail. Now, in our understanding of primate behavior, the biggest mystery from these novel and extremely disturbing observations is whether this behavior is typical or not. We hardly ever see albino primates, so are all infant albino primates killed by other members of the community? The researchers state that the infant's white coloration was actually similar to that of the Colobus monkeys, which chimps hunt. So, it is likely that this coloration caused confusion. Is that what happened or do all primates turn murderous at their young when they don't understand them? Unfortunately, only more observations and long-term observations in the wild can tell. But these findings do mark a crucial milestone in our understanding of primate behavior and evolution of human behavior.